Welcome to Millennium Daily News. This is Ifat Fatima with Top Stories. Las Vegas shooting, Paddock's girlfriend denies knowledge of attack. Trump avoids gun control talk in Las Vegas visit. U.S. lawmakers want to restrict internet surveillance on Americans. Iraq forces retake town of Hawija from IS. Law Minister makes courtesy call on Acting Chief Justice and Shakib joins MCC Wall Cricket Committee. Those were the headlines, now the detail. The girlfriend of the Las Vegas gunman who shot dead 58 people has said she had no idea what her kind, caring, quiet partner was planning. Mary Lodanley's comments came hours before police suggested Stephen Paddock had been living a secret life. They said he may have been planning to escape instead of shooting himself dead, but did not give further details. It is not yet known why he opened fire on an open-air concert committing the worst shooting in modern U.S. history. Clark County Sheriff Joseph Lombardo told a press conference that Paddock's motivations and whether there were any possible accomplices remained a misery. The FBI's Aaron Rouse said so far no link to terrorism had been found but they would continue to look at all avenues without closing any doors because it was an ongoing investigation. President Donald Trump avoided the topic of gun control while visiting Las Vegas just days after the deadliest shooting in modern American history. The visit, which comes hours after Trump visited Puerto Rico to survey the damage wrought by Hurricane Maria, marks the president's second trip to soothe national concerns in as many days. In Las Vegas, Trump met with the local politicians, first responders and survivors of the shooting that killed 58 people and injured more than 500 others. Though Washington lawmakers have been facing questions about possible gun control measures in the wake of the massacre, Trump told reporters that he would not address the issue while traveling in Las Vegas. Trump's desire to avoid the tricky topic tracks with talking points the White House distributed after the shooting that urged supporters to stress now was not the time to talk about gun control. A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers unveiled legislation that would overhaul aspects of the National Security Agency's warrantless internet surveillance program in an effort to install additional privacy protections. The bill, which will be formally introduced as soon as, is likely to revive debate in Washington over the balance between security and privacy amid concerns among some lawmakers in both parties that the U.S. government may be too eager to spy on its own citizens. The legislation written by the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee is seen by civil liberties groups as the best chance in Congress to reform the law known as Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act before its expiration on December 31. All five living former U.S. presidents will participate in a benefit concert to raise money for hurricane relief efforts in Texas later this month, the George H. W. Bush Presidential Library Foundation announced lately. Former Presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George H. W. Bush and Jimmy Carter will appear at Reed Arena at Texas A&M University on October 21st for the Deep From the Heart, the One America Appeal concert. The event will also feature rock and country musicians including Alabama, the Gatlin brothers, Lyle Lovett, Robert Earl Keane, Sam Moore, Yolanda Adams, Cassidy Pope and Stephane Quell. Country music artist Lee Greenwood will MC the event. This isn't the first time the former presidents have come together for the One America appeal. After Hurricane Harvey struck Texas in September, all five were inspired to join forces and filmed a video urging citizens to help out amid the devastating flooding. 
In the rural village of Salinas in southern Puerto Rico, freight electric lines hanging from a utility pole blew in the breeze last week near the town square, but the damage didn't come from Hurricane Maria. Those wires were actually there before, said Parmin Seda, 68, a Salinas resident who said he has grown accustomed to downed lines and power outages. Two weeks after the storm plunged the island into a blackout, less than 10% of the Puerto Rico's 3.4 million people have seen power restored and many will wait months. Restoring the grid after the worst storm to hit here in nine decades would be a monumental task even for a well-run utility. It will be much harder for the chronically underfunded Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority, which went bankrupt in July amid mounting maintenance problems, years-long battles with creditors are shrinking workforce and frequent management turnover. Spain's government has said it will not accept blackmail after the Catalan leader indicated that independence could be declared next week. Carles Puigdemont must return to the path of law before any negotiation could take place, the Madrid government said in a statement. His criticism of the king showed he was out of touch with reality, it added. Catalan officials say 90% of those who voted in a disputed referendum on Sunday backed independences. Organizers put the turnout at 42% with 2.2 million people taking part, but there were several reports of irregularities. Iraq's Prime Minister says its military has retaken Hawija, the main town in one of the last two enclaves of so-called Islamic State in the country. Haider al-Abadi told reporters that Hawija had been liberated as part of an operation launched two weeks ago. Only areas on the town's outskirts remain to be recaptured, he added. Once they fall, IS will be left with only a stretch of the Euphrates River Valley around Al Qaim in the western desert near the border with Syria. The jihadist group still controls large parts of the valley in the neighboring Syrian province of Deir al Zor, but it is under pressure there from Syrian pro government forces and a US backed alliance of Kurdish and Arab fighters. Welcome back to Millennium Daily News. Now, news on Bangladesh topic. Law Minister Anisul Haq made a courtesy call on Acting Chief Justice Muhammad Abdul Wahab Mia at his chamber at the Supreme Court recently. It was known that Anisul met other judges of the appellate division too during the hour-long meeting starting at around 2 p.m. Earlier, the minister refuted statements made by BNP leaders over the leave of Chief Justice Surendra Kumar Sinha saying people should not politicize an issue like this. Anisul said he is in regular contact with the physician looking after the Chief Justice and will surely visit Justice Sinha once the doctor gives green signal. Meanwhile, Acting Chief Justice Muhammad Abdul Wahab Mia said Chief Justice Surendra Kumar Sinha is staying at his home. Acting Chief Justice Abdul Wahab Mia said he had inquired about the health condition of Chief Justice Surendra Kumar Sinha as he is now at his official residence. Wahab Mia came up with the information when senior lawyers of the Supreme Court Bar Association placed a petition before him asking about Surendra Sinha's health condition. Following the petition placed by SCBA President Advocate Jainul Abidin, the acting Chief Justice, has requested them to meet the Chief Justice at his chamber, citing that it is not a matter of court. Former President of SCBA Barrister Moinul Hussain, Advocate Khandakar Mabu Hussain, AJ Muhammad Ali, Barrister Modud Ahmed, Former Justice Khadimul Islam, Nazrul Islam Choudhury, Advocate Shubrata Choudhury, and Barrister Mabubuddin Kokon were among others present. The Supreme Court has cleared way for government to deduct five marks from second-time medical admission seekers. The five-member regular bench of appellate division led by Acting Chief Justice Abdul Wahab Mia passed the order after hearing the appeal filed by the state seeking a stay order on high court order. 
In fact, the regular appeal bench upheld the decision of the vacation chamber bench that stated the High Court stay order on government decision to deduct five marks in medical admission. Advocate Yunus Ali Akond moved for the petition while Attorney General Mabube Alam stood for the Health Ministry. Bangladesh and India signed the final agreement of 4.5 billion US dollar third Indian line of credit. Economic Relations Division of Bangladesh and Exim Bank of India signed the deal. Indian Finance Minister Arun Jetli arrived here on Thursday afternoon and Finance Minister AMM Muhit witnessed the signing at the Finance Ministry. During the visit of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to India in April 2017, an Indian line of credit of 4 0.5 million US dollar was announced for Bangladesh. This deal brought the total quantum of credit lines extended by India to Bangladesh over the last six years to 8 billion US dollars. Signing of the third dollar credit line agreement will enable the implementation of a number of key infrastructure projects of priority to Bangladesh and officials said. A former army member was stabbed to death allegedly by some miscreants over land dispute on Dhaka Silet Highway at Adittapur in Bahubal Upojela. Quoting local people, police said a group of miscreants riding by a microbus intercepted a CNG run auto rickshaw carrying Sajidur Rahman Tenumia, about 50 years old, a former member of Bangladesh Army and son of Aftab Mia, while going to Habiganj court around 8 a.m. to appear before it in a case filed over land dispute. At one stage, the miscreant stabbed Tenu indiscriminately, leaving him critically injured. Later, he was taken to Bahubal Upuzila Health Complex, where the doctor declared him dead. Vishudit Dev, officer in charge of Bahubal Police Station, said Tenu had an enmity with his relatives over a land dispute and the miscreants might have killed him over the issue. Two suspected drug traders sustained bullet hit injuries in a clash with police personnel in Kadamtoli, Pukurpar area of the city recently. The injured are Shah Jalal, around 19 years old, and Noman, about 18 years old, of the area. Abdul Aziz, officer in charge of Kadam Tuli police station, said on secret information a team of police conducted a special drive in the area. Sensing the presence of law enforcers, they hurled bombs to the police, prompting them to fire. Later, Shah Jalal and Nomar received bullet wounds and their associates managed to flee the scene. Viewers, now Millennium Business News. The UK and the EU must agree on a Brexit transition deal by Christmas or risk banks triggering their contingency plans. The Bank of England has warned. Deputy Governor Samuel Woods said that while the UK is committed to an implementation period, the EU's position is not yet clear. If no deal is reached, banks will begin a potentially disorderly shift of operations overseas. He said that would mean banks becoming more complex and harder to supervise. Speaking at the annual Mansion House City Banquet in London, Mr. Woods said if we get to Christmas and the negotiation have not reached any agreement on this topic, diminishing marginal returns will kick in. Shares in the UK-based entertainment giant Marlin are up almost 2% on reports the Madame Tussauds and London Eye owner has held talks to take over parts of U.S. theme park giant SeaWorld. SeaWorld, which is based in Orlando, Florida, especially is in marine parks. Its shares rose 5% on speculation a deal was in sight. However, Merlin, which is also runs Legoland theme parks around the world, is understood to be interested in only buying part of SeaWorld. Merlin is already the world's largest aquarium operator in august at the time of its interim results it said it might only be interested in seawalls bush gardens assets the king of debt has plenty of power but he can't make puerto rico's mountain of debt magically disappear president trump who gave himself the royal moniker during the 2016 campaign told fox news Geraldo Rivera, that we will have to wipe out Puerto Rico's crushing debt loan. 
Trump's dramatic statement spooked the market. The price of some Puerto Rican bonds crashed 15 percent, suggesting investors are even more worried about being repaid. U.S. bond insurers like MBIA also took a hit. But analysts say Trump's words shouldn't be taken literally. He doesn't have the legal authority to erase Puerto Rico's $73 billion in debt. Mick Mulvaney, Trump's own budget director, told CNN that Trump's comments shouldn't be taken word for word. Saudi Arabia and Russia have very little in common, except for oil. For years, the world's biggest oil producers have clashed over Middle East politics and battle for energy market share. But their disparate need to rescue oil prices brought them together last year and that partnership will be the focus of talks between King Salman and President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. It is the first ever state visit by Saudi monarch to Russia and both sides will be looking to broaden the relationship. Russian state media said they wanted to boost bilateral cooperation in trade, economic, investment, cultural and humanitarian areas. Viewers, now Millennium Environment, Science and Technology News. New figures show the UK government failed to reduce illegal levels of air pollution in the 18 months after a court ordered it to clean up the air. At the end of 2016, the UK still had the same number of zones with illegal air pollution as in 2015. That's despite being under a Supreme Court order at the time to bring down nitrogen dioxide emissions mainly from transport as soon as possible. The government said it had put in place a $3 billion plan to improve air quality. Ministers have been forced to increase their ambition on pollution by a succession of court defeats to an environment campaign group, Client Earth. The 2017 Nobel Prize in Chemistry has been awarded to three scientists for improving images made of biological molecules. Jack Dobusche, Joshin Frank and Richard Henderson will share the £831,000 prize. They were named at a press conference in Stockholm, Sweden. They developed a technique called cryo-electron microscopy, which simplifies the process for looking at the machinery of life. The process makes it possible for life's molecule building blocks to be captured meet movement and allowed scientists to visualize processes that had, that had never before been seen. Professor Dubuchet was born in Switzerland, Joachim Frank in, is German and Richard Henderson is from Edinburgh, UK. An epic and historic data breach at Yahoo in August 2013 affected every single customer account that existed at the time, Yahoo parent company Verizon said lately. That's 3 billion accounts including email, Tumblr, Fantasy and Flickr, or three times as many as the company initially reported in 2016. Names, email addresses and passwords but not financial information were breached, Yahoo said last year. Viewers now Millennium Sports News. All-rounder Shakib Al Hassan has been appointed as a member of the prestigious World Cricket Committee by the Marylebone Cricket Club. Shakib announced the news on his official Facebook page with the induction letter recently. Shakib, in his post, stated, "I truly feel humble that you have chosen me to be a member of the prestigious MCC World Cricket Committee. Thank you for bestowing me with." 
such an honor. The NCC authorities sent a letter to the world best all-rounder on September 18, informing him of this appointment. Besides Shakib, the other members of the committee are Mike Ketting, Ramis Raja, Shorab Ganguly, Charlotte Edwards, Vincent Der Bilgel, Jimmy Adams, Rod Marsh, Tim May, Brendan McCollum, Kumar Sangakara, Ricky Ponting, Ayan Bishop, Kumar Dharmasana, and Susie Bates. Mashafi bin Murtaza, the skipper of Bangladesh ODI team, has turned 34 on Thursday. He was born in Norail district on October 5, 1983. Mashafi, popularly known as the Norail Express, broke into the national side in 2001 against Zimbabwe and became a sensation immediately. He was then arguably the fastest bowler for the country. Later, through the turmoil of an injury-prone career, he established himself as the leading bowler for Bangladesh. Injury caused him to miss out on playing the ICC Cricket World Cup 2011. Mashafi is one of the most successful captains ever in the history of Bangladesh cricket and has led the side to many heroic victories under his tenure. The right-arm pacer has played 36 tests for Bangladesh, taking 78 scalps and as many as 232 wickets in 128 one day internationals and 42 wickets in T20 for Bangladesh. He was also the former T20 captain. Cricket South Africa announced a 14-man ODI squad with Dane Patterson making a maiden call-up for a three-match series starting on October 15 against Touring Bangladesh. Pace bowler Pedersen has been included in the squad to replace Morn Markle while a middle order batsman Temba Bevuma got a recall for ODI around a year break after his debut in September 2016. Five Duplessis first assignment as ODI captain will see him take charge of a squad sans several senior bowlers for the series. With joining the list of those unavailable due to injuries suffered earlier in the week, Morn Markle and Chris Morris, who played for the side against India in the ICC Champions Trophy on June 11, have been dropped from their previous ODI squad. The first ODI will be held at De Beers Diamond Oval, Kimberley on October 15, while the second and third ODI at Boland Park and Buffalo Park on October 18 and 22, respectively. Before ending, the headlines are once again. Las Vegas shooting, Paddock's girlfriend denies knowledge of attack. Trump avoids gun control talk in Las Vegas visit. U.S. lawmakers want to restrict internet surveillance on Americans. Iraq forces retake town of Hawija from IS. Law Minister makes courtesy call on Acting Chief Justice and Shakib joins MCC Wall Cricket Committee. This is all for now from the Millennium Daily Newsroom. To get any kind of news, please log in to social media, facebook.com slash millennium tv usa and youtube.com slash millennium tv usa. Besides, to get the most updated news, please visit our website, millennium tv usa.org and millennium tv.net. Stay with Millennium TV USA. Allah Hafiz.